Hello friends, welcome to my YouTube channel, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. Mickey Gilly was born to Arthur Fillmore Gilly and Irene Gilly and was born in Natchez, Mississippi, United States. For many years, Gilly lived in the shadow of his well-known cousin, Jerry Lee Lewis, a successful rock and roll singer and musician in the 1950s and early 1960s. Gilly grew up just across the Mississippi River from where Lewis grew up. Gilly, Lewis, and their cousin Jimmy Swaggart played together as children, and Lewis taught them his piano style. They sang both boogie-woogie and gospel music, but Gilly did not become a professional singer until Lewis hit the top of the charts in the 1950s. Gilly then cut a few singles and played sessions in New Orleans with producer Huey P. Mo. His record Call Me Shorty on the Dot label sold well in 1958. In the 1960s, he played at many clubs and bars, gaining a following at the Nesital Club in Pasadena, Texas. Paula Records released Gilly's first album, Down the Line, in 1967. He had a minor hit from the album called Now I Can Live Again. In 1970, Gilly opened his first nightclub in Pasadena, Texas, called Gilly's Club. It later became known as the world's biggest honky-tonk. Gilly's Club and its mechanical bull were portrayed in the 1980 film, Urban Cowboy. He shared Gilly's Club with Sherwood Cryer, who asked Gilly to reopen his former bar with him. The club portion of Gilly's burned in 1990, and the rodeo arena portion was raised in 2005 to make way for a school. In 1974, Gilly recorded a song that originally was only supposed to be recorded for fun, titled Room Full of Roses, written by Tim Spencer of the Sons of the Pioneers, which was a one-time hit for George Morgan. The song was released by Astro Records that year, and then Playboy Records got a hold of the single and got national distribution for Room Full of Roses. From then on, Gilly was signed to Playboy Records, working with his longtime friend Eddie Kilroy. Room Full of Roses became the song that put Gilly on national radar, hitting the very top of the country charts that year, as well as making it to number 50 on the pop music chart. He had a string of top tens and number ones throughout the 1970s. Some of these hits were cover versions of songs, including the Bill Anderson song City Lights, George Jones' The Window Up Above, and Sam Cooke's Bring It On Home To Me. He remained a popular country act for the rest of the 1970s. Other hits in the 1970s include Chains of Love, Honky Tonk Memories, She's Pulling Me Back Again, and Here Comes The Hurt Again. These songs were a mix of honky-tonk and contrapolitan that brought Gilly to the top of the charts in the 1970s. However, a new breed of singers were entering country music. These singers were country crossover artists that brought country success with them onto the pop charts. These singers include Glenn Campbell, Crystal Gale, and Murray, Olivia Newton-John, Barbara Mandrell, and Kenny Rogers. To compete with this new breed of country singers, Gilly had to sound like them and have that kind of country pop success that these singers were having. In 1978, Gilly signed on with Epic Records, when Playboy Records was bought by Epic. By 1979, his success was fading slightly. Slightly. Songs like The Power of Positive Drinkin', Just Long Enough to Say Goodbye, and My Silver Lining just made the top 10. By 1980, Gilly decided to come up with a new sound to bring him country crossover success so many other country singers were having at the time. His career was given a second go-around when one of his recordings was featured on the box office selling film Urban Cowboy. The song was the country remake of the soul standard Stand By Me. As the movie was becoming successful, so was Stand By Me. The song rose to the top of the country charts in 1980 and hitting the top five of the adult contemporary charts, as well as making the pop top 40. Room Full of Roses, True Love Ways, and You Don't Know Me also hit the Billboard Hot 100, additionally, Bring It On Home To Me, That's All That Matters, and Talk To Me Bubbled Under. A string of six number ones on the country chart followed the success of Urban Cowboy. Other number ones include True Love Ways, A Headache Tomorrow, You Don't Know Me, and Lonely Nights. He never had any other pop hits though. In 1983, he had other hits, like Fool For Your Love, Paradise Tonight, a duet with Charlie McLean, and Talk To Me. All of these songs from 1983 were number one hits for Gilly. In 1984, he had a hit, which just missed topping the country chart called You've Really Got a Hold On Me. Another hit followed with a duet with Charlie McLean, Candyman, and a solo hit with Too Good To Stop Now, both of which made the top five that year. 
However, his stream of hits was beginning to come to an end. Up until 1986, Gilly struggled to make it into the top 10. He was only releasing two singles each year. The year 1985 brought top 10s with I'm the one mama warned you about and you've got something on your mind, followed by a top 5 with your memory ain't what it used to be, and a top 10 with Duwa Days in 1986. Duwa Days was Gilly's last top 10 hit on the country charts, as a new breed of George Strait-inspired country singers called the traditionalists were moving into Nashville, like Clint Black, Patty Loveless, Reba McIntyre, and Randy Travis. Not only was his chart success fading, but Gilly had a series of financial problems that led to the closing of his club in Pasadena, Texas. In 1988, Gilly signed with Airborne Records and released an album, Chasin' Rainbows, which resulted in his last top 40 country hit in She Reminded Me of You, which made number 23 that year. In a career that included 15 years of chart success, Gilly had 17 number one country hits. For his contribution to the recording industry, Mickey Gilly has a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame at 6930 Hollywood Boulevard in Los Angeles, California. He also turned his attention to Branson, Missouri, where he built a theater, which was a soon-to-be boomtown for the country music industry. On March 2, 2002, Gilly, along with his two famous cousins Lewis and Swaggart, was inducted into the Delta Music Museum Hall of Fame in Faraday, Louisiana. Gilly also appeared on Urban Cowboys, Episode 9 in the third season of American Pickers, which aired originally on September 5, 2011. In 2012, Gilly signed a Branson-based vocal group, Six, to a three-year lease to perform in his theater, with an option to buy it when the contract expired. Gilly returned to the studio in 2017 and released Kickin' It Down the Road the same year. The CD contains several new recordings and several remakes of classic songs originally recorded by him. In 2018, Gilly teamed up with longtime friend Troy Payne to record Two Old Cats, a CD containing 13 classic country duets. Gilly's first wife was Geraldine Garrett, whom he married in 1953, when he was 17 years old, they divorced in 1961. She was the mother of three of his four children, Keith Ray, Michael, and Kathy. Geraldine Garrett died on March 6, 2010. Gilly's second wife, in 1962, was the former Vivian McDonald, by whom he has another son, Gregory. Vivian Gilly died in 2019. Gilly's children Kathy and Keith are in the music business. Mickey and Cindy Loeb, his longtime friend, business associate, and basically his right arm for 35 years were married in June 2020, in a small private ceremony in Branson. They met when Gilly was a passenger on a flight Cindy was working. In July 2009, Gilly was helping a neighbor move some furniture when he fell with the love seat falling on top of him, crushing four vertebrae. The incident left him temporarily paralyzed from the neck down, but after intense physical therapy he was able to walk again and return to the stage a year later. However, he still lacked the hand coordination necessary to play the piano. He died on May 7, 2022. May his soul rest in peace. That's all for today, thanks for watching, see you soon with another video.